what is going on guys name is here bringing you guys a brand new video now today we're gonna be doing part two of the top 30 players of all time now number 20 is gonna be josiah barry my boy slack i mean he's an eight-time land champion five-time runner-up uh the guy has 30 plus top four finishes over seven titles like slack was consistently in contention for being on a like to be a top team throughout years. He picked up a ton of championships over like seven years. The guy was just competing with the best and the best of them, right? Like his team was always a threat. Uh, I remember when I first learned about Slack uh, and I actually teamed with him in, in Black Ops 2 and he was an absolute beast. At Hardpoint, he was one of the best SMGs. Uh, he just had great placings, man. He was always on a solid team. And for me, uh, he 100% deserves to be on this list. Uh, he has gotten more hate than most Call of Duty players will ever experience throughout their entire career. and. Uh, I, I think it's 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 unnecessary. I don't think he deserves the hate that he gets uh, for a guy who's had such a fantastic career. Just go to his COD wiki page, look how long he's competed, and look at his performance over a ton of events. He absolutely deserves to be in this 20th spot. Now, number 19, we have Big Joey D, Joe DeLuca, 13-time land champion across three titles, champs runner-up. Obviously, I was on his team during that one. Then 27-plus top four finishes. Think about that, 27-plus top four finishes. The guy's just an absolute beast, man. Uh, he's won so many tournaments. Uh, obviously, he played way back in the day, and then he stopped earlier than I thought he should have. He could have kept on competing. So for Joe, I mean, being part of that Optic team, the original squad that just did so much damage, and then in MW3, we didn't have so many tournaments, and he was one of the best players in the game, like Black Ops 1, COD XP, all these games where Joey D was frying. He absolutely deserves to be in the top 20. For him to have not played in so many years and to still stack up so well achievement wise uh, like against all these other players is so impressive so joey d coming in at number 19 on the list number 18 we have parasite now parasite is a nine-time champion he has a world championship and a 10-year tenure now i know the last few years he's been in challengers he's been dominating challengers at times he's been up and down but he's been doing overall well in challengers right like he survived and he's done some good things there and then when he was a pro player obviously he was part of that for rico impact team which did so well and won a world championship four in a row and then he left joined unite and won a tournament there and then he left and joined phase and won a tournament with them like parasites had a fantastic career in mw3 i thought that he was an unbelievable player as well we won two tournaments in that game uh when i was on his team i thought he was the best player in black ops 2 for a time so individual skill factored into where i placed him so for parasite i have him coming in at number 18 as well uh, i i think that he just deserves to be here in the top 20 uh and he still has more time maybe he'll make the miraculous comeback who knows Coming in at number 17, we have Selium. He's an eight-time champion, top 10 overall stats since he came into the league across two titles, world champion, right? World champion, let's not forget that. And he's also a champs runner up. Now I'm looking at this guy's page, okay? And seeing when he came into the, it came into the league, right? And what he's done in such a sp short span is just ridiculous uh to me i think phase is absolutely a dynasty at this point that's across two games where they've been winning tournaments top two of champs world championship selium major part of that in the equation shot up the list like a firework man he's 100 one of the best players to ever do it in such a short span i mean you look at him comes in their team is so nasty obviously he's not one of the best teams in the game but he still shines right so for selium number 17 wouldn't put him anywhere else. Number 16, we have Rambo Ray. Now, Rambo Ray is number 16 on my list because he's a seven-time champion across two titles, two champs finals appearances. He's a pioneer and a world champion coach, right? Let's ignore the coaching part, obviously, because we're talking about his performance as a COD player. I just had to throw that in there, but as a COD player, now he doesn't have as many accolades, still very decorated. I mean, seven-time champion across two titles, two champs finals appearances, that's really good. But he was the like the teacher for so many COD players. I mean, for that Optic team, he was basically the coach and captain of the squad who taught them how to play the game. He taught me how to play the game, study how to play the game. All these players, he basically pioneered a generation of Call of Duty talent. And for that, he 100% deserves to be on this list. And 16, I think, is the perfect spot for him. Um, just doing what he's done for call of duty it's it's unmatched man uh he, he he learned how to play game modes that we didn't know how to play uh back in the day we were just running around trying to get kills i mean you think about black ops one what he was able to do there and then mw3 it's just all these games this guy was just so good uh but anyways coming in at number 16 we got rambo ray coming in at number 15 we have john champs mvp 10-year tenure, tenure with a couple breaks 
but eight championships, two challengers chips, and a world title. Did I forget world championship MVP? John dominated that entire tournament. He was lighting it up for the entire time. If you remember, he joined that team after, uh, you know, Slasher and J-Cap. They dropped AX and TP. They picked up John and Apathy. John turned into absolute unit, versatile with any single weapon in his hands. He was dangerous. Uh, he, he just lit it up, man. So for that, I mean, individual skill as well. Across a couple games, he was so good. Black Ops, one people forget, John was an absolute beast. I mean, he was a little kid coming into the league, just absolutely frying. I think he was like one of the youngest pro players we had dominating winning championships he won a championship in that game so for john his tenure his world championship his mvp comes in at number 15. coming in at number 14 we have attached the iciest player of all time when it's in a 1v1 that's the guy you want in there uh besides his individual talent uh his ten years has been insane seven year tenure he was a championship in five of those games that have been out in those seven years uh he's an eight-time champion world champion uh, the guy, I mean, it was him and Clay MVP duo uh, at that world championship. He's still winning chips. He won one last year with the Minnesota Rocker, with the uh, the Minnesota Rocker miracle that happened with the reverse comeback. He just had some spectacular moments in the history of Call of Duty. And when he starts to fall out of that fold of being on a top team, he always creeps his way back in, builds a good roster. Uh, he's a foundation of a team and uh, it's hard to come by. So attached 100% deserves to be here. Number 14 is where he comes up for me and he still has an opportunity to shoot to that top 10. Number 13, we have Slasher, Austin Lydico, one of my good friends, one of my best friends in the Call of Duty scene. He's a seven time champion, world champion and a champs runner up. He has so many great moments in Call of Duty history, won the Black Ops 3 World Championship with that squad. They won the event right before it. And then you look across the board at his statistics. I mean, he's just been a lights out AR player. One of the best AR players of all time, uh, definitely in the top five. And then you look at his list. I mean, outside of his first place, I mean, the guy has like 15, 20, like nearly 20 second place finishes. And then you look at his run with the, the 100 Thieves team that he had in Black Ops 4. He was unbelievable during that time. And he has his run when he is on that Envy team. Super good during that time. Then he has his AW squad where they were disgusting while the guy was building robots. They were still coming out and getting top four placings. Unbelievable player. Comes in at number 13. He has He's super decorated and he's still going. So for Slasher, that's where he deserves to be. Coming in at number 12, we have the big man himself, Arcides. The guy is a world champion, a nine-time champion, a five-times runner-up. He's been on some of the best teams in Call of Duty in the last few years. He's been the captain of his squad now going in. I mean, he's basically leading the young guys and getting them to, to figure it out. And he comes in, immediate impact, they win a world championship. So Arcides, I mean, the ability that this guy has to use any weapon and go off to also in every single game mode basically be the foundation of the squad sort of like when you get down to this level when it's the top 15 players these are the do it all type of guys right these are the guys who join a squad and they have an instant impact and when they're in their prime like rc's right now in his prime it's going to be extremely tough for him to not be on a top two top three team like he's just always going to be in there he's just so good he's got such a good voice at calming the rest of the guys down at figuring out how to get past obstacles when the team isn't performing at uh making players like simp and abizi better like when you have those superstar smgs you need a player that can complement them and make their play style work even better and rcds is that guy he joins the team and he makes your superstars better while still putting up his own stats at the same time so world champion nine-time champion five-time runner-up gotta throw rcds up there coming in at number 11 we have tyler polchow tp the man himself 20-time champion world champion three top four world championship placings guys like the guy got to the top four three times you know how many people have done that not many unless they're the guys who have like two or three chips in it and we're talking karmas we're, we're, we're talking clasers crim sixes like tp was doing this for so long black ops one black ops two ghost like the guy's just so damn good at call of duty and people forget if you didn't watch back then what he was doing for his squad he was the the guy who would do all the dirty work he played objective to a t when that was a role in call of duty tp was the model player for that role people copied how he played we used to join teams and be like we need a tp we need somebody who's going to play like tyler and he's number 11 the best ever do it in that role did so much damage with that team with aches in them just an amazing player. The best duo of all time. Well, top two now, I guess, if you're counting like Sib and Abizi, formal scum, but what they were able to do. Top three duo of all time, TP and Aix, 
unmatched. Teep deserves to be in an 11. And honestly, I contemplate putting him at number 10, but it's tough because now when we get into the top 10, you're looking at people who've won multiple world championships or the people who are just insanely freakishly talented with the accolades to back it up. So for TP, he comes in at number 11 for me, but damn, I wanted to put him higher. That is going to do it for the second portion of this list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think I did a good job. I think everybody plays pretty well uh, on this list right now. Uh, so far, so good. I think the top 10 is where you guys are going to get angry at me, but we, we'll see. OK, uh, but right now, feeling good about it. Leave a comment where you think I, I missed the mark or where you think people should be. I looked at my list multiple times. I truly believe in this list. Uh, but let me see what your guys concerns, what you guys are thinking. All right. It's always good to see that. Uh, but leave a like if you have it. I notice a lot of you guys watch the video and you don't like the video. It helps a lot. So leave a like if you want more content. Till the next video. See you guys later.